Hello everybody, this is Bodrich and I uh, haven't really fully prepared uh, this video here, uh, thought about exactly what I want to do, but I think I want to continue working on the homepage so it will get finished. Th these videos are more, almost more for, for me just to, to force me to, to keep on uh, going with this uh, uh, stupid homepage. But in the last video here that I uploaded uh, before I went to bed yesterday, I, I uh, showed you the secret CSS dirt tech checkbox dirt tech, which is a very cool thing, by the way. Uh, it, it makes it so that you can uh, remove a lot of JavaScript uh, if you use this technique. I will show you now soon what, how the ho homepage looks now, but whatever. At the end of this video, uh, there's a, a i3wm crash at the end. Uh, and Gavin here was very sad when he saw that, but sometimes things like that happen. But to be honest, it happens not that often here uh, for me on my system. And let's uh, see if we can review that crash a bit here. Uh, here is that video. And I guess the crash is somewhere here, you know. Yeah, here it is now. I think what I'm trying to do here, first I uh, um, I hid the, the C container, you know. This is the A container, both of these windows are part of the A container, this is the C container, this is the B container, and this is the D container. A, B, C, D. And uh, you, you, uh, if, if you vision the, f the four containers, A, B, C, D, in a grid, you know. Um, that means that A is left to B and A is also above C. So with my i3 uh, uh script, if I move the A container up and the C container is visible below the A container, it will hide the, the C container. And that's what, what I do uh, initially here because I think I want to make like a, have a better pre preview of, of this, uh, uh, yeah, the web page container here. So there I, I hid the, the, the C container. So now, now we only have A container, B container and C container. And the A container is split. And this is something that I not uh, uh, commonly use, split. I, I almost always have tabbed containers. But uh, yeah, as I have mentioned, uh, I, I like to have this Hugo server here running in the same container as the uh, web page preview. But what I do now is uh, I activate this window here. Uh, I, I think we can see that in the notification here as well, that I will um, press super shift return to activate this window. And then I, I press that again with the intention to hide this window, because that's how i3 run and, and, and stuff works. It should hide uh, the active window. Uh, it does that by default if you, if, you, if you execute i3 run on an already active window. There we can see super shift return activated i3, i3 term 2 there. And then I press it again to hide it. But what it actually does is it hides uh, the whole container. And that's also done by default because if this would be a tab container, then uh, this window would occupy the whole container, so to speak, you know, um, or be the only visible, and then it hides the whole container. And that's what it does now, and that's not really what I want. I want to only hide uh, this window, and there it, I, I hid it, and, and what I do now is I try to bring back the browser window with super shift F, and that's when things get completely weirded out. Super shift F. And here yeah, I love this. Press F to uh, press F for respect, you know. <laughs> and that's what I did there also. And then when I brought back that container, I think that's because I tried to bring back uh, a, a, a container that wasn't tabbed. So this is something I, I probably should look into. Uh, there's two things uh, I think I should uh, modify in my i3 as uh, suit. One is with i3 run, uh, if I uh, activate a window uh, that is uh, li like this one, that isn't in a tabbed container, then it should hide that window and not the whole container. 
so I have to make a test to see if, if it is uh, tabbed or 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 not, and also if it is the only window or not. Because if it if it's the only window in a horizontally split container, for example, then it will still be the only window in that container, and then I want to hide the whole container. I know this is a lot of, of uh, uh, under the hood uh, talk here, but whatever, why not? So that's one thing I want to do, and I think that might actually almost solve this issue. Uh, but I guess I should also look into the i3 as or i3 theta code uh, and and uh, and see how how these things works when I try to bring back a horizontally split container if that actually causes uh, issues like this. Uh, and if it is like that, then maybe I do a quick fix and and set the container to be tabbed, send it back, and then. Uh, uh, change the layout back to, to horizontally split or whatever it was uh, again or something like that so that's something I should probably uh, take a look at uh, and I think I will do it today it was a very long time since I uh, did any anything serious with, with my i3s uh, scripts and stuff because I almost never have these uh, i3 crashes but when you get that it's like a signal that you should do something and I don't think I've ever had a report or anything on, on this uh, behavior, so it is kind of uh, rare to, to do this kinds of things. So that was uh, a little crash and, uh, and then <laughs> when I pressed F that happened. <clears throat> All right. Script kitty goes to weblamp. Super shift F. This is my homepage now. I, yeah, guess I should take a look at this also because it, it starts the homepage before the server uh, is finished here, uh, generating the site. Um, I should also open Sublime here. And then let's see, do we have it here? No, we have it in, I have fixed uh, the, the Sublime project a bit here to be easier to, to navigate for me. Here, I followed uh, this tutorial uh, to make a hamburger animation. Uh, let's see, from Coldstacker. I have mentioned his channel before. I think it's it's a really, really good and, and, uh, and kind of overlooked uh, uh, web dev uh, tutorial channel. You have a very high pace, at, le at least in this, there you can see, it's, it's like a burger animation. And it's done completely, these are all just CSS blocks, it's not SVG, it's not images, it's like uh, three containers here with rounded corners. I don't, I'm not sure, this might be like a, a very uh, bad resource hog to do this, but whatever. You click it and then it turns into a cross, and then when you click the cross again, it turns back into a hamburger. And I followed that tutorial uh, and created that burger and replaced the dummy burger we had before. So now I have this this thing here, I press it, and then we have the menu. And as you can see, I also added some animations to, uh, to the menu here. But on small screens, there, was no, there is no animation. It just brings, brings in the, the menu full screen here, or the sidebar. And on large screens, uh, the burger disappears and the uh, uh, sidebar is always visible. In Codestacker's uh, tutorial here, he, he actually uses uh, a JavaScript uh, uh, thing that he creates. It's just like two lines of JavaScript that uh, adds uh, a class to the, the burger um, so, so we can know which state it is in. But as I mentioned in the last video about the CSS dirt tag, that is exactly what you can do with a checkbox. Uh, it, have, it, it already have two states. So I've, I have hooked, hooked this burger uh, to, to a checkbox. And the same checkbox also controls the, the, the sidebar here. So, so, so this is possible to do completely without JavaScript. And, and that's how I have done it here. This is only CSS. Uh, so, but I don't really want to make a tutorial and a video where I do this because that's just a ripoff of what Codestacker have done here. So watch his tutorial, watch my previous one and combine those two and then you will have something like this. 
Right, um, and I will leave a link to this uh, uh, video in the show notes. Uh, I watched another uh, tutorial on Code Stacker, uh, by the way, that was very good, uh, just just like a day ago or something. It was um, this one, Emmet, Code Faster with Emmet. A really good tutorial on that, and I, I believe Emmet um, is available for, for most text editors. It, it, if, if you use VS Code, it's built in by default, as, as, as I understand. Um, I think I mentioned this before. Sublime... Well, maybe it's not available for, for the cool kids editors, you know, in the terminal stuffs and, and things like that, you know, but... Uh, well, here it is. Vim, Emacs also ha have it, so yeah, I guess these are official plugins then. But it's like a tiny little language uh, to make it extremely fast to 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 create uh, HTML doc uh, elements and stuff. And in this uh, video, he really really uh, explains that well. Uh, and also Code Stacker's videos are very well produced, very good audio, and he, he speaks uh, quite slow. I think that's on purpose because it's uh, it's completely fine to watch these videos in, in uh, double speed, but it also doesn't sound weird uh, at uh, normal speed, but re really good tutorials. Uh, so we'll link this one as well. Also, this thread on the i3 <laughs> subreddit uh, is really like all all Reddit you need, you know. All right, so what are we gonna do now on the site now that I have all these uh, cool things here? And I've checked off a lot of things on on the uh, uh, to do list here. One thing I I had to make a cross on was uh, theme scroll bars, because apparently uh, theming scroll bars is. Uh, Barely supported on Firefox and not supported on Pale Moon at all, but it it have like full support on on Chrome and uh, WebKit uh, browsers. But uh, whatever, I don't want to install Chrome just to see how how the scroll bars look customized, you know. So I I will leave them uh, default, even if that might be annoying in in the design, but. Uh, whatever. So I made a red cross on that uh, item here in the list. And I think now it's uh, time to um, to start uh, uh, fine-tuning this sidebar and the items and stuff and that also connects to the content creation things you know. Um, so let's just get into that. What about that? Yeah, let's do that. Um, so, or this sidebar, this this navigation part of this sidebar, which is my my little uh, pet project, have been for for the last couple of months here. Uh, and this is uh, a module I have created in in Hugo here that I call uh, BudNav which consists of a bunch of, of uh, uh, Hugo templates here first started with this init the init starts the folder and then it loops uh, 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 it loops a setting tree that looks here it is in YAML but this can be uh, uh, written in uh, JSON and TOML as well, it doesn't matter. Mm. And I think I want to do this. Open this in this window instead. Like this. Mm. Should use my key bindings now that I have them. And here, this this uh, jamal here, it it um, uh, it is what what makes this um, sidebar. 
So you can create things like like a, a tag directory here. You could change the name of this tags directory to whatever. And then it will change name here to whatever. You see, I have uh, set the icon here to tag 19, whatever that means, you know. Uh, and here is the icon target. <laughs> and some options here to this taxonomy list. Here we have pages, a, a folder called pages. So, so this is just like the label for the folder here. It, it, it could be, it doesn't mean anything mean nothing. I've never tried this with spaces, maybe that breaks the whole thing here. No, it works. Mm, and this uh, folder contains a page list and a page list is, uh, yeah, contains sites uh, based on some filters. For example, here I have defined that it should only contain uh, uh, pages from the sections, dots and shoe. And shoe uh, is a section that doesn't exist. Uh, I, I was just trying things out, but it should also uh, uh, look for for tags, taxonomies. Uh, the taxonomy tag uh, have to be video, and it will. Uh, uh, and it also wants either rise or testing as the tags of of that page and, and those tags are set uh, of course individually on, on the pages so let's see here it was some MPV this one here we can see we have we have a, a, a page with, with the tags video player and rice so in the tags list we can see all of those player video rise and the numbers here are how many pages have those uh, specific tags um, and then you can also set uh, if you want reverse here if i set this to reverse then it will uh, have the reverse uh, listing here so data will be first we can sort by date and and uh, by name and stuff here also uh, so this this is a good way to create like custom subdirectories. If I want a, a, a subdirectory somewhere in the tree, that's what I uh, my intention here later to, to create like a uh, this rice item will be as will be a directory containing like uh, maybe it will have a subdirectory called polybar, and that in turn will have like a a directory called articles, and then I can make and and that uh, uh, directory I will use this page list and look for. Uh, uh, sections, uh, posts, because articles are in posts, so I don't take any dot files or anything, and and uh, then I can look for uh, taxonomies and polybar or something like that. We can make really fine-tuned uh, automatic directories here. We could of course test this also by by changing. If we change this, let's, let's leave this or empty here, and then just set that to testing there instead, and then we should have. Two different uh, pages, or didn't work. Maybe it's because this is empty. It's it's still a bit of a working progress here. Okay. Ah, of course. It it looks for. It also have to be testing. There's probably one one page here in in the dots directory, and one of the testing uh, uh, pages is in the. Uh, posts directory and this is probably the most interesting uh, um, item you can add to to this uh, budnav uh, because that's what I call this budnav it's a post uh, uh, or a blog tree uh, entry and the blog tree here uh, uh, this is not the label here as you can see blog tree posts but here it says blog because here you set the label uh, to define the name of the entry, I might might change this so, so that will be the case for everything. So it will be, uh, uh, um, yeah, the same way to customize things, or whatever. Work in progress. But here, posts refer to create a blog tree of the section posts, and the section post is in the content directory here in my Hugo project. Uh, 
And right now I only have two sections, dots and posts. So, so when I enter posts here in the blog tree, it will create a blog tree yeah, of, of the posts uh, section. And the blog tree, it will automatically uh, list everything by year, by month and uh, by date. And it will append or prefix uh, the title of the pages with the date they were created. And now when I was testing this, I created almost all of these at the same the same day here. So all of them were done here the 23rd of November, except for this one, which was created the 6th of September. But uh, if, if, if we would change the date of one of these posts, uh, and here you can see I can even uh, create them in, in a, put them anywhere in any subdirectories and, and stuff in the posts uh, directory here, and it will uh, automatically move them to, to the right place anyways. So if I would change this to, let's say this was uh, written in 2017 and uh, October uh, 6, maybe, because that's a good day. And then we save, preview, and now we can see we, we it, it automatically creates this 2017 and then with everything there. So, so that's what the blog tree do, does. Um, and I don't think... I added that many settings to the blog tree here. It, it, it will always create these sub sub sections or sub directories with the year and the month and list them in, in date order. But I have planned to add like a, a something a setting called like archive limit maybe or something. Haven't really decided, but but then we could set like archive limit second uh, February two thousand sixteen. So any older uh, uh, articles will not get listed in the tree and instead you will get a link uh, at the bottom of the tree here called archive or something. Clicking that then you will get the, go to a page with a full archive listing or something like that. Dots here uh, is um, a section tree. That's also a different, uh, I, I have tested here a bunch of different uh, uh, types here and all of these I have created this this is not the default Hugo in any way I have spent a lot of time uh, doing this so section tree it will take a section um, and right now you know I have uh, posts and dots here and it will take it will just uh, uh, mimic the whole uh, directory structure and file structure of that section and and uh, create a list like that. So here we can see dots, it look like this. And if I would change this to post instead, then it will uh, uh, use post and take the directory structure from there instead. And this list, lists it in alphabetical order and, and things like that. And this is something that, that is kind of uh, uh, complicated and, and hard to do with Hugo. It doesn't really uh, want to know about these subdirectories and stuff. So I had to do a bunch of, of weird, weird, dirty things to get it working. Uh, then we have uh, the most stupid uh, uh, item you can add, which is just a link. Uh, so if you, if you write link and then the name, the label of the link here, uh, then it will create a, a, a link. This is this doesn't expand. It will just uh, uh, go to the URL here, which is rice here now, uh, meaning a, a, a local page here. You can see the URL bar down here changes to rice, and I don't think I or I know I don't have anything there. It's a 404 if I go there. Uh, and you can also create like uh, just a folder containing links if you wanted to do that. So. And that's the thing, you can add uh, folders and then I could, I, I could also add uh, subfolders in this folder by just doing one of these things, you know. And then we have some more links. And then we have a, another folder called RSS here, uh, containing uh, the RSS. So, I think I want to do this. I, I will make a backup of this... Uh, Call it example or something. Like that. And then uh, 
now let's start fixing this and, and yeah and we will soon look into how the icons and stuff work here because that uh, i think that's the thing that i'm most uh, uh, have, uh, proud of uh, how it turned out and i spent so much time uh, trying to understand how svgs and stuff work here yeah let me show you because it's so cool <laughs> um, if we do this um, super control e will open thuner with the current uh, uh, directory open here here is a directory called uh, with, with the icons used in the sidebar and some icons that aren't used in the sidebar um, and let's see where did I store those god damn it this is not good because yeah it's the perfect here we have those let's move that maybe we can have it here or maybe here do this okay. there. So I found I, I found uh, uh, a bunch of icons uh, somewhere. SVG icons, very good icons because they are very uh, small in size. You know, and SVGs you can open them in a text editor and look at the source of the sources. Like it's nothing. Well, this one was quite complicated, but. Uh, Let's see, this one looks kind of simple, so th this should just be, yeah, you can see, 300 characters, that, that's uh, a very small size. And you can actually edit the path here and change the appearance of, of, of the SVGs and stuff, but, but these are very, very small in size, perfect for icons and stuff, you know, and when you want this simple, simple things. So let's copy a couple of these into my um, asset directory here. Let's just take some random ones here. Like this and uh, this. Paste them there. And nothing happens here of course. Um, and then let's move this guy up here then. And maybe see if we can get whoops what happened now there just so I can see the the names uh, here we have one icon called uh, chart 14 so if I change this to chart 14 14 then it should use that icon for this uh, tag directory instead and you can see it immediately changed there and then you might think, oh, but that's uh, nothing special about that. It just uh, uh, used that link there. But let's look at the source here now. Um, maybe it's better to do inspect element here. Because the source is so messy, the auto-generated Hugo source is uh, kind of difficult to, to look at. See if we can do something like this. So here, here, here we have that icon. Oh, God damn it! This is the icon, you, you know, and it just says uh, use SVG juice href pound symbol chart fourteen, which was the name of the icon, you know, and then some weird xlink href stuff here, and that's the whole thing. That that's the whole SVG. There's no icon information. There's no link or anything. It's just the uh, links to some. Uh, uh, symbol here because that's what these are called in, in uh, SVG these are symbols and they are uh, here uh, before before the whole navigation element here the, the bud nav uh, section here of the page I first import uh, or include all the SVG files that will be n used in, in the, in the uh, um, list here. And here we can see um, 
chart 14. And this is, uh, and now th this text here in between, that's just something I did here for, for debug reasons. I shall, will remove that soon. But we can open here and see the, the path here to, to the SVG. But it's actually even more uh, minimal here than, than it was. Um, mm, 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 let's see, chart 14. I don't think it's a big difference, but sometimes it is. Or you, we will soon see. God damn it. I should have searched so many icons. Here it is. Short 14. Open that. Yeah, look exactly the same now. Who cares? But it have removed some information about it. Uh, and uh, but the, the coolest of the coolest things here is that I can do this. Um, no. Okay, where did it go? There it is. So this is the assets directory here. If I open this icon in Inkscape. And then modify this icon here. Just do some Jin Yang stuff here, you know, whatever. I don't know. I don't really, I, I, I'm no graphical uh, artist kind of person, you know. but, but now it looks completely different from, from the original here. And just save this document here in, in Inkscape. Check this out. Changes immediately here in the icon. It changes immediately in the source code. Uh, short 14. Now, yeah, well, it added a couple of Inkscape stuff here, but that's fine because if we look at the original uh, SVG file here, oh, oh, it's it's this one now. This is how it looks like after we have modified it in Inkscape. It's a uh, it's a lot more Inkscape specific code and stuff here. All of all of the bloat is removed. Uh, I hope it's bloat at least is removed before it's inserted in the document as a symbol here. And the cool thing using symbols is that uh, uh, it will be inlined in the document, which I talked about. Is it's not uh, there are a drawback. You cannot cache uh, those uh, uh, those icons. But the, the the nice thing is uh, that I can reuse those icons. Sure. Now this chart fourteen, it's only used at one place here in the document. But these uh, folder icons uh, and uh, these file icons, they are used like already at uh, like 20 places. And, and when I'm done here, I will probably have like over 100, maybe 200 uh, individual uh, uh, items, you know, many with the exactly same, exactly the same uh, icon. And when you are using uh, symbols like this, then the, the code to, to, uh, to add one of those is just that uh, simple simple uh, well now i kind of lost it but svg ju use uh, symbol you know uh, and that makes a big difference because i've seen others who use uh, uh, icons svg icons they they often use it like i did with the the, the wallpaper you know and uh, add it to the css so so you have like a class saying uh, this is an icon icon class uh, chart 14 and then it takes looks in the CSS and see okay icon uh, um, chart 14 should have uh, this uh, SVG embedded uh, SVG that you would have then in, in, in the CSS but but that makes a big difference in when, when you're using icons because then it will insert uh, the the SVG, it would look something like like uh, like this, you know, but for each icon would have have this stupid stupid stuff here. Uh, one drawback will be that it will uh, when it generates the page, it will uh, fetch fetch these uh, stuff here from from the CSS and insert it into the it's called the DOM, the document object model or whatever it is, you know. But it will insert the same big long path here in, in the 
in the DOM at every place you, you, you use that CSS class. And it doesn't affect that much performance. But when you add up, you know, uh, 100, 200 of those lines, uh, that, then it makes a difference, of course. And another drawback is these are very difficult. If, if I would like to modify this uh, pattern here, for example, this is the background pattern, you know, this. If I want to uh, modify that, then I would have to open it in Inkscape or, or something, uh, modify the, the SVG path, then uh, open it in a SVG optimizer to, to, not, to remove the bloat and stuff, and then copy the SVG paths and stuff and, and insert them manually here in the CSS, you know, it's it's a big hassle. You could see the, <laughs> the how simple it was here to, to uh, modify the icons here. Just open it, preview it instantly, and it will uh, de-bloat the uh, SVGs automatically and stuff. And another thing that is uh, uh, kind of good to, to know here is these are all in my assets directory here in, in my Hugo project. But if we look here in, in uh, DevTools, let's move this one here instead so we can see them all. If we look in DevTools and, and look at what symbols we have here, you see all, all of these icons are not included here. Because uh, my script uh, or my, my Hugo module here, it's uh, intelligent and it will uh, analyze this uh, YAML to see uh, and to only make a symbol for each uh, uh, unique uh, uh, icon in this list. And if, uh, if I write something that doesn't exist here, uh, blah blah, that's, that icon doesn't exist, let's see what happens. You know, then it will uh, use the fallback icon here, which uh, right now it, it is uh, Internet Explorer <laughs> or Edge or something here, uh, but it will use that, and and the source code will look like. Um, and also here, this JavaScript here that is inserted uh, by by Hugo uh, for the live preview. It's not it's not mine, and this is just for development. Whatever, whatever. Uh, main. Uh, Let's inspect again here. Yeah. SVG block. So here we can see that it actually inserted uh, the, the icon anyways that doesn't have a name. But that, uh, that icon uh, in this SVG list is just a link to the fallback icon, which is inserted uh, first of all icons. So you can customize this completely how you want, but uh, you can never uh, this folder open, folder close. They are special. They they will they are be uh, compiled into one single. Uh, uh, what's that? You know, here here it is. So folder open, folder closed will be uh, included in, in one single uh, SVG later called folder here. But as you can see, there's a lot of things going on there and um, some quite crazy, crazy stuff I do to, to achieve that. To, to, to find that the unique uh, icons here, uh, I do this. Um, I take this YAML here, which is uh, settings here now. And then I JSONify that, making it a uh, one long JSON string, a single JSON string, because then it, it, it's really easy to just use uh, regular expression and search here for uh, the icon keys in that JSON. Because finding the unique icons here in the YAML, then it would be a really either a complex, very difficult, weird regex, or um, also I would need to loop a bunch of different uh, lines or traverse the YAML is also not trivial to do for, for this because you, you, you don't know how it looks like, you know. But this actually, th this worked really well. <laughs> so I just find the icon blocks and then I uh, um, remove the icon elements from that. Uh, and then I um, 
append all, all those icons as uh, th those icon strings uh, to one uh, uh, to a slice here, and a slice is is more or less a, a indexed array uh, in Go. Uh, and here at the top, I set the defaults uh, first: fallback folder and file here, the default icons, you know, which which should always be included. Uh, but then I append the found icons here, but then I also pipe the, uh, the full list here uh, with the uniques also because you could use, you can use the, the, the default icons uh, directly here to sp specify that if you want to. And then it will make a unique uh, slice uh, out of that. Meaning I will only include uh, the, the icons that are used uh, or that are named here. And then um, in this weird loop here, I check for, for uh, I I I debloat uh, the import the, the resources and stuff and debloat them and, and look if they even exist if they don't exist use the fallback and so on. Uh, yeah, <laughs> okay. This video became more of a demo of of my my uh, Budnab thing here. Uh, I don't know if it makes any sense. Uh, and also. When I'm completely done with this and have uploaded it, uh, I will try to make a, a Hugo module of it so, so you can import it and use it together with other themes if you want to. And the only thing you need to do uh, to, to, to use the BudNav is to add... Yeah, you, you need this file. Uh, configure a file like that there there will be like a example file but then you just add this line uh, where you want the, the the tree to appear so if we move this here now then and do this and we could do this and then hello now the list is gone and hello so so it's only one line uh, of, of Hugo code really and everything else is done automatically uh, by parsing that that uh, YAML or JSON or TOML file uh, and yeah well there there is of course more more to it here uh, the styling of this uh, because this o only renders the, the the HTML here then right now, this is something I, I think I, 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 I will uh, change a bit here, or I, I, I will do that. Because uh, right now... Uh, it... Uh, yeah, let's go here. Let's add this. Maybe that's a good idea. Here, I have this style file here with like the basic uh, style that turn, turns this whole thing into a tree. Um, not sure if we if we just remove this the test here. Yeah, then it looks. This is how it looks completely unstyled. Uh, and now uh, the checkboxes doesn't do anything. So this is also embedded into the HTML, this style sheet here. Um, let's see if we can see in the dev tools again. Uh, oh, let's do this. Inspect. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Here. Uh, the CSS here uh, that is specific for, for this navigation is, is actually included in the HTML here as one single uh, minified uh, CSS block here uh, in line and that is not perfect but I think I will keep it like that as a default but I will add like a uh, a, a Hugo setting that you can set to, to tell it to, to use either a different uh, base style sheet or um, don't use any style sheet at all, and then you can can 
uh, add these styles uh, by yourself in your own CSS instead because that would make more sense in a way uh, um, yeah but I think I get back to that and also in, in my mind, I, I imagine it wouldn't be uh, impossible at all to create like, instead of a tree, make a, a bar of it instead, like a top bar or a bottom bar, where the when you expand a, a, a section, it expands up like a menu like this and subsections could go out like, yeah, like a start a task bar or something, you know. So then I could add like uh, two more uh, style sheets here, one for top and one for bottom. And then you could add like a setting uh, to tell BuddNav here which uh, uh, default you, you would like to use. And you can also, uh, yeah, we can see that, um, that there is like a class uh, setting you can do here. For example here, the whatever here now, the tags uh, directory here, it have a class uh, item that said it uh, tags folder, sidebar folder. And that will, uh, in, in the uh, generated HTML, it will add those classes to that item here. So you can uh, inject class names in, into the generated code, so it will be easier to, for you to target it uh, uh, with uh, um, with your own CSS. Uh, otherwise, uh, there are no um, default classes. Instead, I use this data attribute here uh, to make sure that it doesn't clash with any custom style sheets and stuff. Oh man, yeah. So. Yeah, I think we, we make a break there and next video we, we, we start customizing this, uh, making it look better, uh, making the content work better and stuff. And right now, the tags here, when I click them, I just uh, enter these empty pages and stuff. There, there's a lot of, of work to do on, on the, the content side as well, the dot files and whatever. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye.